Good day, good day everybody and once again we are back together. Well, I thought that for those of you that are doing technical maths, uh, for those of you that uh, are in grade 10, uh, in fact I think this might even work for those that are in grade 11 and grade 12, um, I thought we'd walk through this question paper. So please, if you haven't subscribed, please make sure that you're part of this family. All right, so I want us to start right from uh, question one. There are really some interesting questions. And for content that is not available as yet, I will make sure that I will make that available to all of you. All right, let's get right into it. So in question one, they say between two integers, right? Between which two integers, rather, does square root of 97 lie? Now, I want you to think about this, right? So if we look at uh, square root of 97, of course, we cannot be able, that's an irrational number, right? However, what are the perfect squares that are between that number? So the perfect squares would be 81, okay, as well as 100. Okay, so square root of 81, remember, that would be 9, okay? So 9 multiplied by 9 would be 81 and 10, right? Uh, 10 squared is 100. So meaning that square root of 97 would actually be uh, fall within those. So square root of 81, that's 9. Square root of 100, that's 10. So square root of 97 is right between those numbers. So it should be between 9 and 10. Right, so I uh, hope that you got that. So that is between 9 and 10. Okay, right. Now they say to us in 1.2, given the following binary numbers. Now remember, guys, when we're talking about binary, we're talking about uh, ones and zeros. Okay, so they want, uh, they're giving us the binary numbers. I'm still going to curate some uh, lesson on binary Right, they say add the binary numbers, leave the answer in binary form. Right, now I want you guys to note, so we are adding these two, so we're adding 111 and we're adding 100, zero, zero, okay, in binary form. Now, in this case, always when we add 1 and 0, we always get 1. Whenever we add 1 and 0 again, we get 1. Wherever we, whenever we add 1 and 1, we get 0, but we carry over the 1, so we've got 1 over there. So, in binary form, the answer will be 1, 0, 1, 1. By the way, I'll also show you how to actually uh, write this out uh, in decimal form. Uh, that's 1.2.2. They say, hence... Your answer, write your answer at question 1.2.1 in decimal form. Now, I want you to note, so what binary simply means in this case is that we've got 2, so we start with 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 2, and 2 cubed, right? So you'll continue that way to, to the power of 4 and all of that. But in this case, we've got four binary digits, okay? So um, that means, now, there is a 1 here, which means that is a valid number. So we're going to take that. So that's going to be 1 plus, that's going to be, uh, there's another 1 there. So that is related to, to 2 to the power 1. So that's 2. Okay, plus. Now that's a zero, which means that digit is invalid. So that's zero. Plus two to the power three, that's going to be eight. So that is valid because we've got a one there. So let's add all of those numbers up. That's eight plus two plus one, which should give us 11, right? Now I want us to check. If we were to verify, we had one, one, one. So that means this is 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 2, 2 to the power 3. So that number in this case, ach, no, actually, uh, sorry about that. That's going to be 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 2. Right, so that means when we look at that number, we've got 1, 1, 1. So each of those digits is valid. So we've got 1 
plus 2 plus 4, right? So in this case, that gives us 7. Okay, so this number here is 7. And then we've got 1, 0, 0. So which means we've got 0 plus 0 plus 4, right? So 2 to the power 2, that's 4. So in this case, that's 7 plus 4. And definitely, ladies and gents, when I take 7 plus 4, that, de that does give me 11. So uh, it verifies that our answer is correct. So as a result, our correct answer in digital form would be 11. All right, let's go on to the very next question. So they say to us, we've got, um, they say, determine the product and simplify. So we've got ax squared plus 3y plus ax plus 4ay. All right, now let's find the product of this. So we always start with brackets, right? That's according to the bot mass rule. So a times x squared, that's ax squared. a multiplied by 3y, that would be plus 3ay plus ax plus 4ay. Remember, in this case, we are now adding and we always look for like terms. There's only two like terms that I'm seeing here. That's ay and ay. And remember, what makes a like term? That the variables have to be the same and they have to have the same orders. They have to have the same power, right? So that means in this case, as much as this is ax, but the order is two for my x there, and the order is one for this one, so they are not like terms, right? So I'll have ax squared, I'll have ax, and there are my like terms. I've got 3ay plus 4ay, and that would give us 7ay. And that is what our product would actually look like, okay? Right, so let's go on to the next question. So we've got P minus 2 into P squared plus 2P plus 4. Right, and so what do we do? We're going to multiply the first term into each one of the terms in our second bracket. So that's P times P squared. That's going to be P cubed. Uh, P multiplied by... Okay, so p multiplied by 2p, that's 2p squared, that's p multiplied by 4, that's going to be 4p, and now we've got negative 2. Okay, so now we're going into the other bracket, right? Uh, rather, the other term in the first bracket. So negative 2 times p squared will give me negative 2p squared. So that's minus 2p squared. That's minus 2 multiplied by 2p. That would be minus 4p squared. And finally, negative 2 times 4 will give us negative 8. Right, and now let's try to simplify that. We are looking for like terms. So p cubed, that's the only term with the order of 3. Right, and we've got 2p squared and minus 2p squared. So those two can cancel each other out because they are exactly the same with different signs. And we've got 4p, okay. Um, uh, in fact, I think I made a mistake there. Uh, that was negative 2 multiplied by 2p. That should have been minus 4p. Sorry about that. And so that would be 4p minus 4p, that would be uh, those cancel as well. And we've got minus 8. So our product in this case would be p cubed minus 8. All right. Um, I think it should teach us something. I will go through long division with you at some point. Uh, it should teach us something about um, that kind of a factor. Okay, right. So let's look at the last question in question one. So now we've got 10 to the exponent x plus 1 divided by 
2 minus 1 plus x times 25 to the exponent of x. Now, to simplify this, ladies and gents, what we need to do is we always break numbers down into prime factors, right? So we need to break our um, basis into prime basis, right? Now, if you think about 10, how can I write 10 as a prime number? So that will be 2 multiplied by 5. This is raised to the exponent x plus 1. And this is divided by 2 is already a prime base. So that's going to be minus 1 plus x. I'm leaving it as it is. But 25, how can I write that as a prime base? Uh, 25 is simply 5 squared. So that will be 5 squared raised to the exponent of 2. Right, so to change this now, remember a multiplied by b raised to the exponent of n means that I can say, well, this is a to the n multiplied by b to the exponent n. So using that principle, I know that I've got 2 raised to the exponent x plus 1 multiplied by 5 to the x plus 1, right? Divided by 2 minus 1 plus x times 5 to the 2x. Now, take all the uh, bases that are the same. We add the exponents, or in this case, um, so we've got x plus 1 for 2 at the numerator. But at the denominator, remember that when I take them to the numerator, the exponents change sign, okay? So that will be plus 1. So that was minus 1. It changes to plus 1. And uh, the positive x changes to minus x. The same thing is true, is true with 5. We've got x plus 1 at the numerator. But when I take this to the, uh, at the denominator, rather, we've got 2x. And when I take it to the numerator, in this case, it changes sign. So that's minus 2x. All right. So minus x plus x. That gives me uh, those cancel out. So we are left with 2 squared multiplied by, we've got 5x plus 1, right, minus 2x. So that becomes x minus 2x gives me minus x. So I've got 5 to the 1 minus x. Right, ladies and gents, if you want to, uh, you can simplify this further. But uh, uh, actually, I would leave it here. Okay, so this would be 4, okay, multiplied by 5, okay, divided by 5 minus x. If you want to do that, okay, you may do so, uh, but I would actually be uh, happy if you left it where it is. All right, ladies and gents, that is how the cookie crumbles. So we will uh, now go on to question two, all right? And I will do that in just a few.